I really appreciate the countdown going on. <laughs> Just to make sure you can hear me. Because like always, I never know if the volume is actually working or not. Eat. So it's kind of nice to do a back on the live stream again. Been a while since the last one. Uh, been a while since uh, video, except for the one I just posted the other day. Oh, thank you. I like my shirt too. I have a whole closet full of them that are kind of a little too small for me to wear in public. So I just wear them on camera because they don't look like they're super tight. Hi, Sir Kerbo. How are you doing? So basically, uh, this video or live stream, I guess, I have uh, vials in the freezer to get through and pin to open up and empty the vials so I can use them for my collecting trip this weekend. So I figured if I'm pinning stuff, might as well pin it while talking to you guys and just have a little social hour thing going on or until I finish pinning. So mostly I pretty much have a lot of uh, grasshoppers to go through. Uh, some beetles, Katie dids, all that type of fun stuff. Um, my drawing board that I'm going to be uh, putting these on. You see, I have a, a flat area here and a groove area here. I use that to, uh, for when I'm spreading wings of the grasshoppers and stuff. I can put them that can actually spread the wings out and I can keep them all grouped up in the same spot. Because sometimes grasshopper bodies are like really thick and they don't fit in my... Uh, butterfly spreading boards so plenty of room right there to keep them like that so it's large and bulky but I guess the job done can I make a video on how to pin water insects uh yeah I asked well I have a bunch of aquatic insects and uh, some alcohol vials that I collected, um, but I'm not going to be going through those today. This is just stuff in the freezer vials, but yeah, I can I can do a video when I go through those as well. Well, do you want an actual video video or a live stream video when I do those? Because I can do either or. So I literally have not pinned anything um, all collecting season yet. So I still have <clears throat> vials and stuff from May. So these first couple I'm going to pin out are from May 16th of this year. Um, and they just been sitting in my uh, freezer. Um, and they're finally out of the freezer. Luckily, though, I've been able to uh, manage the uh, space allotment in the freezer, where 70% of the freezer space goes to my vials of insects, and 30% goes to uh, food. I figure that's... Uh, Fair amount to do. Used to have a huge grasshopper. Did he drop it like dried or drop drop it like live? And he dropped it and it broke. You just have a little. 
male green straight grasshopper there. Get that there. And then I like to keep the lights tucked in on grasshoppers because it saves on space. And then I like to kind of move their antenna so their antenna are not like sticking out everywhere and they break off accidentally. So I kind of like uh, hold the antenna down back against the head as much as I can. That's just to help um, any big breakage issues possibly. So if you saw the to the end of the last video, I am pretty excited. Uh, I'm leaving this Saturday night after work, then spending Sunday, Monday, and most of Tuesday down in uh, southwest Wisconsin. Be driving around, doing some phot photography, collecting and uh, videos of stuff I find down in the southern portion of the Driftless area of Wisconsin. So I'm really, really excited about that trip. Um, I'm really hoping to find some really, really nice grasshoppers um, and ants and all that type of stuff. Got a little bumble scarab beetle and there's one more insect in that batch is a little six spotted tiger beetle but um the tiger beetles that i've collected this year i'm actually uh, exchanging with another collector so these are going to uh, another collector in europe so he's getting the tiger beetles and he's collecting um, grasshoppers and ants for me so I'm getting beetles for him, and he's getting um, what I want for me, and we're going to exchange later this year. But I'm just going to set that in there. Um, I'll deal with that later. So there's only there's only those three insects in that little batch. Um Another uh, collection from May. What's my favorite type of insects? Like butterflies, ants, grasshoppers, etc. cetera. Um, my all time favorite are ants. I don't have really, I don't quite have a specific favorite species, but uh, ants are my favorite uh, favorite group, followed by grasshoppers, katydids, and crickets. Uh, do I have ants in my collection? I certainly do. Um, I have tons of vials right now uh, filled with ants that I've collected this year. I have lots of uh, these white boxes filled with ants that I have to sort through and identify. Um, and I just have two finished drawers of ants right now. But yeah, I have lots of ants. Uh, it's just a matter of getting them organized and sorted through and identified and that huge undertaking. Oh, doing some light trapping. That's awesome. Uh, well, during my trip, I'm actually I'm actually not staying in a hotel or anything. I'm actually camping out 
So uh, at least one of the night, and hopefully if I can find a charger for the battery, I'll be uh, putting the, the black light every night of the, of the trip because I'm going to be in a campground and have my tent, so I might as well black light while I'm doing it. Um, so there will be at least one black lighting video from the weekend, hopefully two, um, if I have a charger for the battery. Uh, where can we get Cornell drawers in the U.S.? I don't think there's really any place anymore right now in the U.S. to get Cornell drawers. Um, you have to go to uh, uh, a company in Canada. Um, Atelier Jean Piquet or something, some weird thing. I did a video on it before of like alternative places ever since BioQuip closed. I do have a video I put out for alternative places for uh, buying equipment, especially for those in the U.S. who now don't really have much options. Hopefully so, hopefully a company will pick up BioQuip Slack and uh, take up where they left off equipment-wise because that's a huge loss. Uh, did I pin insects as a child as well? Um, I did. Well, I think my earliest insect I pinned was pro pinned was probably seventh, eighth, or eighth grade, so middle school. That was like my pinning job was horrendous, though. Um, and uh, they weren't very well kept. Um, and that was, well, that was all before Ashley, um, took it like I do now. So unfortunately, like none of those specimens survived and are not in my collection anymore. Um, but that's probably the earliest I've had some pinned insects. Uh, where can you get black lights for your black light trips? Um, well, I got my black light from BioQuip. So can't really do that anymore. Um, but before that, I actually just used, uh, got like a party black light from Walmart. Um, and I used that for years, like in high school and stuff. And um, that actually served me pretty good until I actually got like a field uh, black light. But yeah, I just got a party black light from Walmart and that worked really well for what I what I needed at least at the time. Oh, you can, no communication. Um, I have heard that. Uh, when I placed my order with them, uh, I don't know. Well, it's been months. Yeah, I only went with like a week before I heard back from them and everything was shipped. Um, so when I did ship uh, order from their that company, um, I actually I had no problems. Um, it took a little longer than I wanted, but they got back to me. I got my stuff, no problem. It came in fine and all that stuff. So I personally haven't had any problems, but I have heard that sometimes they communication issues. You've always wanted to try light trapping. I definitely, uh, I definitely recommend it. It's really fun. And you get to see insects that you would rarely or never see during the daytime. And you'd be surprised at the biodiversity that comes up to the light at night. Had a little, just pinned out a uh, spring field cricket uh, that I collected this spring. I think that's actually the very first uh, spring field cricket I have in the collection. I have fall field crickets, but not spring.
Do I have any Carolina locusts? Uh, yeah, I do. I actually... I have a bunch of a uh, bunch of them right here. Carolina grasshopper, uh, at least where all where all I've been in my areas that I've collected them at, um, have been one of the most common species I see in summer and fall. Um, so I see them all the time. To the point where sometimes it's kind of annoying because they're everywhere. Picked up four foot black lights at Lowe's and put them in a shop style fixture. I mean, yeah. As long as you have a black light, even if it's a cheap black light, it'll still work. So you kind of got to. Utilize what you can. Do I have any Japanese beetles in my collection? I do. Not a whole lot. Because they're literally everywhere. And I do not like them. So, and they've been really bad this summer. I mean, they're everywhere. It's quite a shame such a beautiful uh, beetle is such a problem pest. So just picked up a specimen I'm pinning next. Uh, an Arphia conspersa. I see a really beautiful, it's a really beautiful uh, yellow coloration on the hind wing there. Uh, yeah, Japanese beetles are uh, invasive. Um, they pretty much they can pretty much uh, skeletonize a plant, and it's not very good. So because uh, this uh, Arphia conspersa has like has a uh, as a bandwing grasshopper, those are uh, ones that I tend to spread the wings out and uh, pin them out like that. All right. Uh, do I remove the guts on bigger species? Um, I personally have not. Um, I probably should have, but I never have. Um, I've also never really had too much problems Um leaving the guts in. Um, but 
Uh, I know a lot of other people remove guts and like do that type of thing uh, with the larger species. Um, but I have not. Uh, do you have any Eastern giant swallowtails in my collection? I do. I think I have four or five specimens of the giant Eastern. Oh, maybe I only have two. I do have a couple eastern giant swallowtails, and I also have one western giant swallowtail um, that I collected in uh, South Texas. And the eastern giant swallowtails I collected here in Wisconsin and in Arkansas. Recently caught a giant resin bee. Nice. Do you have a decent size collection of Hymenoptera? I don't know if I have that species, actually. I'm sure I've seen it before. I don't know if I've actually ever collected one, though. Has all your guys' uh, Collecting season's been going all right so far this year. Anything really awesome you've collected or saw or anything, if you've been out collecting at all? Uh, I'm kind of curious of how you guys have been doing this year. Uh, yeah, I do have a white cabbage butterfly. I actually have quite a few of them. I got the cabbage whites right here in this row. One drawer if I'm an Optera. Nice. I'm gonna move the move the computer here for a minute. All of these drawers up here. All those are filled with bees and wasps that are not sorted or have like their new updated labels on. So I have probably thousands of specimens to go through. I glitch out and froze. Well, that's a lot of eastern tiger swallow, uh, eastern swallowtails. I've yeah, I've had a uh, I've. I think I've only light trapped three times so far this year. Not enough in my opinion. But uh, every uh, every session has been really good for uh, what I'm looking for, at least, uh, for aquatic beetles and stuff. But, um, yeah, I've had pretty good, uh, pretty good moth diversity this year showing up. Um, lots of small stuff, lots of beetles and stuff. So... Yeah, light trapping has been pretty good for me as well. Live in Georgia. Very nice. 
When am I going to start pinning? Oh, I've been pinning slowly, but I've been pinning. Probably could kind of rearrange this so I'm not pinning like that. I can pin like this and actually face the camera, huh? Because that would just be good manners. Wish to do more collecting. Yeah, me too. The past month, I really haven't gone out at all. I've just been just busy. So that was part of the reason why I went a month without posting a video is because I haven't, didn't really go out collecting at all. Um, hey, Seth, how you doing? But now, uh, now that's just really season for a lot of Katie Dids, Grasshoppers, and Crickets to be maturing and stuff. Um, really going to get out because I have that I have the trip this weekend. And then uh, in middle of September, like the weekend of the 15th, 16th, 17th, or whatever those days are, um, I'm going on another three-day collecting trip. Uh, to northern Wisconsin, around Superior and Ashland, um, along the along the southern part of Lake Superior, and all all around that area. Um, so I'm really excited for that trip as well. South Florida to catch black witch moth. Uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, when I was still working for the uh, CDC, I went to, well, I had a work trip to Miami. And uh, this was a few years ago. But um, I went outside at night and I looked at the wall of the outside wall of the hotel I was staying at and would you know what? There was a black witch moss sitting right there. I didn't have my net, so I tried catching it with my hat. Unsuccessfully. Uh, do you know why pet woodlouse spider won't eat anything I feed it? Um, I'm not really sure. I don't know. It could be molting. could be full. Um, I never kept a woodlouse a spider, so I can't really say for certain. Uh, went to Florida last year, able to pick up a water bug or tow biter. Nice. Like one of those, like, giant water bug tow biter ones or a little, small, little smaller one. Because I've had a couple, I've had a, the giant water bug show up at a black, at my black light every now and then. Uh, do I have one of my, I do not have a black witch moth in my collection, unfortunately. You should always have a net. Yes, I should.
Got a couple nice. Up to now a uh, couple of really beautiful, uh, was it Pardella Fora? I think it's Pardella Fora Piculata. Really nice uh, red hindwing coloration there. Really quite beautiful uh, grasshopper species. Uh, these are still collected here in Minnesota uh, back in May. Uh, hot and dry summer in Europe. Uh, it's been it's been hot and dry here too. Um, you don't really feel it as much here in the Midwest because here in Wisconsin and Minnesota, um, we well here in Minnesota and Wisconsin we had a really wet spring, a really cool spring, um, a hot summer. Relatively dry summer, um, and but in the past couple of weeks now, it's almost been raining nonstop. Um, but uh, overall, here at least in upper Midwest to United States, um, the insects have been doing really good. I've seen lots of butterflies this year, lots of bees, um, lots of moths. So. But that's just like from my personal uh, observations this year. Um, so in my area, at least, it hasn't really been that bad. Uh, I don't, I try and bring a net wherever I am. I'll rephrase that. There's always a net. I always have my nets in my car. Um, sometimes it's I'm in a place where it's easier not to carry a net. Um, but I always have a vial on me. So if I don't have a net on me, I always have a vial just in case. A kid in that? Hey, whatever works. I mean, I just have a uh, uh, a foldable pocket net, so it actually folds up like in a small circle. I can actually stick it in my pocket. And uh, that's come in handy. See, so they're all that, and then I also just use my catch with my hands or a hat if I have a hat on. Uh, no rain. I, well, I have heard like, yeah, I've heard it hasn't been too very good out, uh, in Europe this year. Uh, do I have any great purple hair streak specimens? I have a grand total of one that I actually collected at night at a porch light, uh, by Jacksonville, Florida. I don't know how or why, but I found one. Uh, Sonoran Blues. I do not have any Sonoran Blues, unfortunately. Um, they are... Sonoran Blue is a species that is one that I really want to go and actually collect. Uh... 
favorite beetle species? Uh, Cisandella pulchra, a type of uh, species of tiger beetle. Which I unfortunately do not have any specimens in my collection either. Well, honestly, sometimes I purposely leave my net and my vials in the vehicle because I want to actually find what I'm looking for, when, because, and they always show up when you don't have anything with you. So sometimes I uh, just leave it in the car so they show up. Uh, what do I use in the drawers? I actually have nothing. I've back in Colorado, I didn't have I didn't have to use anything. I had no problem with pests at all. Um, and here, now that I moved back to Minnesota, Wisconsin area, um, I still don't have anything in them, and I still have no problems with pests. Um, I consider myself extremely lucky in that part. Because pests can, can show up whenever they want. So honestly, I probably should find something to put in my drawers, but never attended a 4-H program. Uh, in high school, I actually did the 4-H entomology. Yes, I did. Um, that was pretty fun. Um, and in my... In my area, there are very few uh, 4-H entomology people. So I didn't really have much uh, much competition entering my stuff. But uh, other people did have some really cool, really cool insects that I wasn't able to collect. The uh, hot shot pest strips. Oh, you can find them at Lowe's. Oh. I guess it wouldn't really, wouldn't really hurt to try those out. Uh, let's see. Slowly but surely getting through these. Do I have another part of the Fora Piccolata? Two. 
two will help you out. Three. Okay. Very tiny insects. Um, I don't know if you have room or not, um, but what I've also done in the past was uh, just stick a bot, like get insects that like look like they have like a pest on them or like looks like they're being eaten. Take all them out, put them in a box and stick them, stick them in the freezer for a couple weeks. Um, I've done that before in the past and it worked just fine for me. Um, I've had no problems doing it that way, at least. But I don't know how big your freezer is or if it's like a whole box or you can actually just take specimens out. Oh, you're going to try it? I mean, honestly, it wouldn't hurt to try at least because you never know. Hopefully, they'll help with your problem. The sad thing is I don't even have all my insects out of the freezer that I'm pinning right now. The rest I'm probably going to have to pin Friday or something before the trip. Have I ever collected insects in Europe? I have not, unfortunately. Um, the closest I have at the moment is um, there's people in Europe who've, who collect insects for me, and I collect insects for them, and we exchange. Um, so I get insects from Europe from other collectors. Um, but I've never actually personally gone to Europe to collect yet. I obviously want to because, you know, who wouldn't want to go to a different country to collect insects? Do I stay up until sunrise when light trapping? Um, I have before. I haven't. I haven't done it for a while. Um, I'm usually in bed by one or two. Um, not for any particular reason. 
I just get tired and want to go to bed. So. My regular, my regular, I'm usually always in bed by 10 o'clock anyway. So by 9.30, I'm usually half asleep. 10 o'clock, I'm sleeping in bed already. So sometimes I miraculous, miraculous, miraculously can stay up until dawn. It's two forty six AM there. Well, I, I appreciate you staying up that late to watch, the, uh, to hang out with us. It's only 7.46 p.m. here. Do I have any Cecropia moths? Uh, I have one. During my whole life, I've only ever seen maybe three Cecropia moths, and I only have one in my collection. I, I find plenty of polyphemus moths and plenty of luna moths, but uh, the cecropia moth is definitely the hardest one to come by for me. Never stay till sunrise when light trapping. Yeah. It can be hard. Granted, the last time I stayed up at sunrise was uh, when I was did an all night drinking party, but that's kind of a different matter. And honestly, while out collecting, it might be a I should probably stay out longer because different uh, different species come out later in the night at different times. You had seven Luna Maws at your last light trap? Man. That's awesome. Most Luna Maws I had at one night was three. Yeah, so Cropias don't don't really show up at lights. Um, I think probably until after two o'clock. So the best chance to see one of those is definitely if you're planning on staying out all night.
Uh, I'm actually almost done pinning you guys. Have I ever used some kind of baits? Uh, have I used a bait before? I swear I have. I can't remember if I actually did or not. Oh, um, my. I've never added any bait to my pitfalls. Um, I think the only thing I've ever actually used bait for were have been uh, ants. But for anything else, no, I don't think I've ever actually used bait. So earlier we were talking about a couple of invasive species. Here's actually an invasive uh, katydid. Uh, this is a Roselle's katydid or a Roselle's bush cricket. And they are not native to the United States. Are they native to Europe? I don't, I can't remember. Wife caught a rustic sphinx at her work. Five and a quarter inch wingspan, that's a nice size sphinx. Biggest sphinx in my collection is a uh, giant poplar sphinx. Those suckers are big. That's a long proboscis too, three and a half and three and a quarter inch. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Here we got a real big uh, pardello for a apiculata. Again, with the really nice red hind wings there. Oh no.
That kind of sucks. But those large moths can they really have a trouble with parasites. Do I have any Eastern horse lover grasshoppers? Got a horse lubber, eastern horse lubbers here, and a prairie lubbers here. Almost all the eastern horse lubbers uh, I collected in uh, Miami. I also have one horse lubber from Louisiana. They look, yeah, they really do look cool. And I'm really happy because I didn't have to, I didn't, um, I didn't take any of the guts out of the lubber grasshoppers and they all kept their colors and they all still look amazing. I have any two striped walking sticks. Got a male and a female. I think I have one more specimen of them somewhere as well. But uh, my grandparents actually collect, got me those two. Carthasia nugatoria. I do not know that species. So the session of pinning is all finished. I like the way they all turned out. I have a couple here that I need to add a loca uh, locality labels to. But, uh, Overall, not too bad. Uh, I'm going to be right back for a quick second. All right. Only had a couple snaps, so. Technique for preserving green color and katydids. 
That'd be nice, huh? I honestly am not sure. Uh, acetone bath. I haven't tried an acetone bath. I mean, it works with me for uh, dragonflies and damselflies. Never tried on Katie did. I don't know if the their the their their coloration is uh, from the same way or not. But I have like I can have some candidates that dry green and stay green pretty decently, and others will turn brown and stuff. Um, could be just like how quickly they dry, perhaps. If they're slow drying, the color will leach out. If they quit dry, they'll keep their green coloration. I can't really be too sure on that. I am going to Google that grasshopper species real quick. Well, that's a really cool grasshopper. It looks like the it's a wingless as adults as well. Holy cow, the female's massive compared to the male. That's insane. Well, I think I'm going to give this uh, – we didn't do this for until uh, seven more minutes, until 8.10 my time, so it's whatever, 10 your time. Uh, I actually do not have a pinned specimen of Eastern Hercules beetle. Uh, so, I guess technically, no. I never had one turn black on me. But that's because I never had a pin one. I do have a dried specimen, though, in the closet that I need to rehydrate to pin out. But uh, I haven't had any experience with that yet. But I do know what you're talking about because I've seen specimens and pictures and stuff from, like, just one elytra turning black after pinning or the whole thing turning black. Oh, kind of glad I got all those pinned out, though. I have two, I have two large baits left in the freezer to pin out, but I'm going to do that Friday. Probably, uh, probably won't do anything a video or anything. I'm just going to pin out, get all the stuff ready for the uh, trip this weekend. And yeah. And I I have lots of vials filled with stuff too to pin out. I'm kind of debating how many uh how many videos I actually want to make for the collecting trip. I don't know if you have any suggestions. So I just do one per day, one per site that I visit. That might be too much, though. Maybe one per day, and then one for the night or uh, uh, night collecting as well.
because that'll be a lot of a lot of filming. And I might have one of my friends might be meeting me down there uh, to do some collecting with me. So there's a 50-50 shot that I'll have another I'll have a guest with me on these videos. Or I'll just be my mom by myself again. But we'll see. I also did not realize um, the channel has what is it, 838 subscribers, which to me is actually kind of insane. Um, obviously, I'm really happy about that. And the fact that we're like, Potentially reaching to a thousand subscribers for the channel is really awesome. So hopefully, hopefully by the end of next year, I'll have we'll have a thousand of thousand subscribers on here. Longer videos. That's what I was thinking too. I have a good one, Sir Kobo. Thanks for joining. Get some sleep for how early it is for you. And I appreciate it. I appreciate the kind words. For these videos, at least, I was thinking like I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep the pictures and stuff with the species thing on them because I think that's a good idea for you guys to see like some of the species I'm actually seeing and uh, so you can actually know what species I'm actually seeing because a lot of times like I know the species I'm just too preoccupied with everything out there to even remember the species so I'm going to keep the vo keep the photos and the videos um, maybe add more like videos like obviously with insects, keep those, but more just like walking around so you actually see like the habitat I'm into. Because I figured showing you guys like the habitat, like what it looks like and stuff would be a good idea. Best place for Sonoran Blue, Mount Badley, California. Mid late March. Honestly, I take a three day weekend to fly over there to collect the Sonoran Blue. I have seen a video on YouTube, it's an older video of collecting Sonoran Blues. I don't know if it's that one. Uh, photos are a nice touch. Good. Yeah, I don't know why it took me so long to even do that, but I, a couple of people said those are a nice addition, so I'm going to keep those. Oh. Well, y'all... I think it's time. Opinion is done. I'm gonna relax. Hopefully, go sit in the hot tub for a little bit. So, I really appreciate all of you who showed up for the live stream. It's been fun, fun talking to all of you. And I really hope this trip to, as goes really successful. Get some. Nice videos out for you guys, multiple videos, and keep on going at it. So if any of you have any last-minute questions or something, I'll give you a minute to just uh, 
tape them in real quick so I can answer before I take off. You're welcome, Epic. <laughs> uh, also, probably a live stream next month too sometime. Don't know about what. Maybe no, just another little social thing like this. All right, so there's nothing else. Thanks for watching, joining us. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.